Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. People, there is nothing wrong with getting in touch with your feminine side. Unless you're a guy, in which case that makes you a pussy. But everybody has at least one movie that they've cried at. And for the most part, they were shown to us when we were little kids for crying out loud. There's no doubt about it. Kids' films had some of the saddest and most depressing scenes in cinema history. For films that were supposed to be family-friendly, there's a lot of emotionally tormenting stuff that we were shown in our childhoods. Which is why today, I am bringing you the top 11 saddest movie moments from our childhoods. Why top 11? Because I like to go one step beyond. So, women, get out your tissues, men, prepare your sleeves. This is the top 11 saddest nostalgic moments. Number 11. Saying goodbye from Muppets Take Manhattan. You wouldn't think the Muppets would ever be able to get you teary-eyed, but at the scene where they all had to go their separate ways, it's pretty damn depressing. Saying goodbye, why is it sad? Makes us remember the good times we've had. Out of all the Muppet songs ever sung, this is by far the saddest. Making us feel bad for a bunch of talking socks for crying out loud. That's the sign of good storytellers when the movie has you feeling emotionally attached to an amphibian and a hawk. Wanna cry? Saying goodbye. Get ready for lip to quibble in three, two, one. It's time for saying goodbye. <laughs> Number 10. The Bluebird Song from Follow That Bird. This takes place after Big Bird is captured by two carny folk who want to parade him around as a circus attraction. The guys masquerade him off as the Blue Bird of Happiness. Oh boy, Blue Bird of Happiness? That sounds uplifting! I'm a blue bird that's been dreaming of a rainbow I can follow to that old Familiar place to be back home again. Sunny days. I mean, jeez, this is pretty damn depressing for a Sesame Street movie. All that's missing is for a single tear to fall down Big Bird's eye. Oh, that's just too much! If you're not crying by the end of this Bluebird song, get your eyes checked. Number 9. Death of Littlefoot's mother from the land before time. Let's face it, dinosaurs are always going to be cool, but who would have thought you could actually feel sorry for them? The land before time had a lot of depressing moments, but the saddest one of all is when Littlefoot's mother fights off the evil Tyrannosaurus Rex and sacrifices her life in the process. Dear sweet Littlefoot, do you remember the way to the Great Valley? I guess so. But why do I have to know you're gonna be with me? I'll be with you. Even if you can't see me. Mother? Mother? Oh, for crying out loud, how can a movie make me feel bad for something that died eons ago? Look at this! <laughs> it's not fair. Number eight. An American Tale. Just... Just an American tale. Everything about this movie is depressing. I'm surprised everybody didn't get depression just from watching it. The story is about a little mouse who gets separated from his family while moving to America. The family thinks he's dead, but the mouse continues to look for them anyway. And the rest of the movie is a fucking tease. He thinks he hears his father's violin, but it's just a record player. He thinks some other mice can help him out, but they don't help him out at all. He thinks he found his family's house. And on top of that, every other second he walks right past his family as they just barely miss each other. Just turn your head to the left, damn it! Papa! Five? No, no, no! Go back! Go back! Go back! Five! No, no! The other way! The other way! The other way! God damn it! Just get together! Oh, thank God! This film was directed by Don Bluth the same guy who directed The Land Before Time. His philosophy was that children can handle just about anything as long as you attach a happy ending. Fuck you, Mr. Bluth! I may be able to take it, but my therapy bills won't! <laughs> Number seven. 
The ending of What's Opera Doc. This is considered one of the best cartoon shorts of all time. It was epic, beautiful, and of course, funny as hell. It was satirizing all the Wagner operas in both music and scope, but it takes a real surprising turn at the end when Elmer Fudd, the god of lightning here, tries to strike down Bugs Bunny with all his lightning bolts. Oh boy, what's it gonna be like all crispy and black or something? That's not funny. What have I done? That's not funny at all. I've killed the rabbit. Actually, that's quite depressing. Poor little bunny. Poor little rabbit. <laughs> Dudes, they're supposed to make me laugh, not stop my eyes out! Bugs Bunny made me cry! Well, what did you expect in an opera? A happy ending? No! What I expected from a fucking Bugs Bunny cartoon! Number six. The Going Away Party from Snoopy Come Home. It's not like Charlie Brown was a very upbeat cartoon to begin with, so the idea of doing a whole section of the movie that was meant to make you feel sad is just downright cruel. The scene involves Snoopy as he decides to leave home and go live with his original owner. So the kids decide to throw him a going away party. A joyful, charming, heartwarming going away party. And if that's not bad enough, Charlie Brown sings about what it's like to say goodbye right after this scene. Just when you think that you know where you stand, that's when the scenery changes. You know what I need? I need more hellos. What is up with these people? They're supposed to entertain our kids, not depress the fuck out of them! <laughs> Number five. The Drowning of Artex from The NeverEnding Story. This is one of the cleverest fantasy movies that ever came out of the 80s, but with all its imagination and creative characters, it's the death of a fucking horse that we all remember. Apparently they're going through the Swamp of Sadness, where only those who let the sadness and depression get the best of them sink into the swamp. Thank God Stephen Wright doesn't go there. But wait a minute, the horse Artex starts sinking. Well, what the hell does that mean? The horse has depression? What the hell do you have to be depressed about? Sorry, Wilbur. I just don't think my mother ever loved me. Come on! Just found out my business went bankrupt. Artex. My girlfriend just left me. You're letting the sadness of the swamps get to you. Took all the oats. You have to try. And I lost my sister to the glue factory. Oh, yeah, life's a bitch and then you sink. Artex. Sorry, Wilbur. Yeah, like I said, makes no fucking sense. Number four. The death of Charlotte from Charlotte's Web. Okay, so maybe all spiders don't look quite as cute and lovable as Charlotte did. But that doesn't mean we weren't all affected when she spent the last few days of her life helping out a damn pig. It wouldn't be so bad, except she talks about her death like she's going out to the store. I'm done for, Wilbur. In a while, I'll be dead. Oh, well, I guess that's cool. I doubt what? And as if that wasn't bad enough, she actually sings a song before she died. The autumn days grow short and cold. Now that's the sign of a true hardworking entertainer. Working behind the scenes, never taking the credit, and leaving on a song. What a showman. Er, show spider. Charlotte? Charlotte! <laughs> I'll never use a can of rain again! <laughs> Number three. The funeral scene from My Girl. After the success of Home Alone, Macaulay Culkin was America's hottest child actor, which is why it's so shocking that any movie, let alone kids film, had the balls to actually kill him off. This girl has a lot of grief to live with. Not only is her only friend in the entire world dead, but she's the one that knocked down the beehive that caused him to get stung to death. It's because of her moon ring that Culkin went back. Her dad is the undertaker of Culkin's body. The funeral is held at her house, and she finds out that the teacher she had a crush on is getting married on the exact same day. Who's 
She and I are going to be married this fall. I don't know what medicine they gave her to stop her from turning into a psychopath, but I need some. Where is his glasses? He can't see without his glasses. Put his glasses on. Put on his glasses. I need some. He was going to be an acrobat. <gasps> oh. Number two. The death of Spock from Star Trek II. Okay, I know this is a bit of a stretch, but hey, a lot of kids did watch Star Trek back then. And even if they didn't, we all knew who Mr. Spock was, the pointy-eared guy. So when we saw him sacrifice his life for the team, you can rest assured every Vulcan was crying green tears that day. Live long. And prosper. Rock on, man. The idea of killing off a main character in a Star Trek movie was unpredictable, but the idea of killing off Mr. Spock, the most popular character on the show? That was just fucking insane. I mean, nobody saw that coming. Now granted, a lot of us know that he comes back in the following sequels, but we didn't know that at the time. We thought he was really dead, especially when Kirk makes his big, handy speech at the end. Of all the souls I have encountered in my travels, his was the most... Marketable. Human. Oh, that too. And to top it all off, Scotty plays Amazing Grace on the bagpipes, no less. This is so corny and yet somehow so friggin' sad. Oh God, Spock is dead. Goodbye, dead head. Come back in Star Trek Three and see. And the number one saddest nostalgic moment is... Every single goddamn Disney movie ever made. I mean, what the hell is wrong with this company? In every other film, someone dies, someone leaves, someone's in a deep depression. I thought this was supposed to be Disney, the happiest place on Earth. Happy like a bullet to the head. Like, remember this happy moment? How about this picker-upper? And I'm very seldom following. <laughs> and let's not forget this cheerful memory. <laughs> Disney is always associated with family entertainment, child-friendly fun, but I think they hold the record for the most crying scenes than any other studio. Oh, God! I think the saddest moments are probably the death of Simba's father, <laughs> the killing of Old Yeller, and of course, <laughs> this scene is so famous that people still talk about it, even to this day. In fact, there's a famous Animaniacs episode that satirized this emotionally crippling scene. Bunby's mom, she's... <laughs> Actually, the funny thing is, have you watched this scene recently? I mean, okay, you got the mother shot, the kid looking for her, and the father saying, Your mother can't be with you anymore. But watch what comes immediately after. What the hell? It's like we can't let reality sink in too deep. So here's some pretty birdies. Woo, look at the birdies, look at the birdies. Nobody's dead, nobody's dead. It's just birdies, birdies. You still sad? You still sad? Oh, look at the keys, look at the keys. The keys, the keys. <laughs> Can you imagine if they did that with other Disney films? Sorry guys, it isn't that simple. When somebody dies, birds and flowers don't always pop up to make everything better. You have to deal with it, like everyone else in this cruel, depressing, kid-friendly world. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it so you don't-